Hi everybody, I'm doing a sh video about my uh, Ford tractor that I've been working on, upgrading since I bought it a few years ago. It is a 1964 Ford 2000, it has a four cylinder gas engine in it. Basically, they are a Jubilee that progressed to the 600, 800, and the 600 and 800 series became the 2000 and 4000. No power steering, it has uh, no live PTO, it does have live hydraulics on it. Uh, despite the shortcomings of the no live PTO, you can work around a lot of things with these tractors, and they are well built. They uh, work pretty good despite all the abuse they may take and they can take some. You can't find some in really good shape. You can't find some that are just plumb wore out and this one was on its way to being in that condition but kind of fixed her up as we went along. Uh, tires were pretty well shot on it when I got it. Rims were rusted out pretty bad so I Invariably, I had to just break down and do the, the the high dollar thing and get new centers and new rims and uh, new tires. Tire size is 14.9 by 28, which is kind of wide for these tractors, but uh, that was what that was what was on it. And I went back to the same thing. I got these off a of dealer for their Titans, and pretty good tractor, uh, pretty good tire, pretty happy with them. Uh, got a pretty good deal on them too, since they're kind of a, I'm gonna say an off brand, just a, not a major brand. Uh, centers and rims I got off uh, yesterday's tractor for about, uh, don't really remember, but they were, weren't too salty. But the, it was more money than I wanted to spend, but it was something I just had to do to keep using it. Uh, side walls on the old tires were just shot and uh, like I say the rims were rusted out pretty bad and it was just getting to be a kind of an issue to fix it or, or you know find different used tires and I'd rather go new than used. Uh, if I had to list everything I've fixed on this tractor I wouldn't know exactly where to start. Uh, just a lot of things were wore out on it. Uh, did uh, add a uh, hydraulic remote on it, which was uh, something I wanted on it originally, but uh, wasn't on there. So I, it broke down, bought one from uh, Steiner, and placed it on there, and it works pretty good. Uh, if you have a hydraulic cylinder you want to use on these, they Generally, did not have a hydraulic remotes on them, and but you can't add them. And basically, you take a plate off here and replace it with this plate that has a valve and a two a turn line and a, and, a, and a pressure line. It's not too hard to install. Leaks just a tad bit when the you've run it for an hour or so, and the hydraulic fluids are good and hot. It does just seep a little bit out of the bottom, but there's a lot of O-rings around there that uh, maybe just aren't quite tight enough. That the bolts are about as tight as I dare go uh, without breaking them off. Uh, one other thing I will mention about this, it's a good deal for the money, but uh, they want you to mount this out here towards the front. That's where the hole is, and that's right in the way where, where my leg sits. So I got kind of frustrated after a while. I took it off and uh, drilled the hole all the way through and now I mounted it in the back. And it's more out of the road. And I can reach it a lot easier with my uh, arm when I just reach down. So like using the hydraulic lever here, I can just reach down and uh, grab it and use it. And it's, and it's a whole lot better. As far as the transmission on this, it's the tractor had set outside and the hydraulic reservoir and the transmission were had water in them of course and uh, drained all that out and replaced uh, it with the uh, better stuff and luckily nothing nothing major 
major there. But uh, the one thing I will say about these tractors is, is especially the standard four speed which I have is geared kind of high. For the more I have, uh, I'd, I wish it was a five speed or I had a low range and I could go in high, you know, low range, high gear. I'd probably be a little bit better off, or if it's five speed, I, first gear might be just a tad bit lower. Right now, first gear is, pro I'm guessing, about uh, 1800 RPM is about six mile an hour, and that's a very fast walk for me. Now, I'd rather it be just a tad bit slower, but that's what I've got, and that's what I'm you know, stuck with. But uh, we make it work, and, and it does do a good job with the mower. Uh, also, with a hydraulic remote, my... Uh, seat I had to notch it out here to get it to fit back on and not uh, rub against the uh, valve or the lines on the other side it wasn't a big deal and it still supports my weight just fine but uh, that's something you might want to consider overall from Steiner this pretty well happy with uh, that and uh, it's been handy I have a cement mixer that I use it has a hydraulic cylinder on it I was going to buy a pull behind bush hog that uh was dickering with the guy about that and uh end up not getting it but it had a single action cylinder i wouldn't need remotes for and maybe somewhere down the line i will we'll go that route but uh it's nice having it there's a lot of things you can use a hydraulic cylinder for on implements and things like that uh this is the 134 engine uh replaced the uh, a lot of parts on it. it basically the engine was in good shape and the tin was in good shape the tires and a lot of other things were kind of wore out and I've replaced things over uh, a couple years I've had it uh, rewired almost the entire thing because wiring was just shot and that was one of the major problems that I had with running it was wiring was bad other than a new coil and new plugs and wires uh, basically new points I believe Basically everything else is original, at least original from when I got it. Uh, the tin's in pretty good shape overall. A little, little out of square, but I don't think it's been you know, like rammed into anything. It's just uh, old, been used. Uh, carburetor is fairly new, it's about a year old. I had the tractor for a while and I came out one day to mow with it and uh, turned the gas on under the tank and went to uh, start it up and wouldn't fire and couldn't figure out quite why and uh, didn't take long after I turned the gas on to notice there was fuel seeping out of this little uh, I don't have a clamp on it there's fuel seeping out of the air intake so I pulled that off and fuel just ran out the float had gone bad it cracked and the carburetor was filling completely full and flooding out the engine so that was kind of a bad day for me but uh, couldn't fix the float uh, find anything that would work anyhow so I called Steiner uh, they could sell me a float for like seven bucks a rebuilt kit was like a hundred bucks for the carburetor so I got the rebuilt kit and when it showed up the float was different than the one I the windows in the in the tractor now and so I couldn't really use it and that was a piece I actually needed to, to fix the old carburetor so I called them back told them the problem and they said well we'll send it back and uh, we, we're maybe you know get you a back order on that and everything and I said well you know how long and they didn't know it on back order so I was kind of getting a little peeved about it and they said well we could sell you a new one you know for like 200 and I said I'm not willing to spend that kind of money and so they knocked some money off the new one for me since it kind of was their goof and uh, thought about it and I just went ahead and got me a whole new new one uh, they shipped it to me, put it on, r runs good, uh, seems to run richer than it ought to, but that, you know, went under a heavy load and that's where you, I kind of used to adjust it by, that's where it runs the best at, so I'm not complaining. But I also got the rebuilt, uh, the right rebuilt kit from Steiner, so I rebuilt the old one so I have it for a spare if the float should ever give out on this one. 
but it you know if you look around the engine if you can see there it has a few leaks oil here and there but that's just normal for these I mean this thing is old I put a new starter on it the solenoid is new also uh, didn't really need a new starter per se but the old one was cranking kind of slow and the it wasn't the battery it was a, the starter is uh, kind of getting this old and wore out and I know you can rebuild them but for the price a starter was a good deal so I just got a new one uh, this is the other side of my hydraulic remotes and they go back to there when I got this tractor originally the seal on this side was bad and it uh, of course it leaked all over the brakes and then, then the brakes wouldn't work so took the wheel off took the brakes off took the axle out and put a new seal in there and uh, put everything back together and actually got the brake on this side to work better because the pedal was kind of goofed up seized up uh, was more than I wanted to do but it, it wasn't that terribly hard the, the, the thing to remember with these brakes is when you take them apart uh, take a picture of it with your phone or something like that just so that when you put it back together you get your springs back in the right order it's not necessarily you put them back in the right spot you get them back in the right order you know some springs are belong should go in first some you know should be the last to go in and that's how you should do it uh, you see the sticker still on the rim there and uh, lugs are original uh, the one thing I will say about these tires that I learned real fast these fenders don't sit super high they're a different type of fender for the Ford tractor and if you go to put your hand over there it used to be I had no tread on these tires hardly at all on the old ones and these new ones have a uh, good two and a half three inches of, of rib on them and you can go put your hand on there to hang on or just out of you know, some, something to rest your hand on occasionally you get to, get the ribs flipping against your hand uh, this is the back end of it I did put the uh, hitch on there I'm glad I did because that comes in real handy for pulling my trailer with the ball on it could also take the ball off and just pull a regular wagon something like that I put stabilizer arms on it just, just for the fact I like the stability of when you're on a slope or something this mower doesn't shimmy left and right a lot and doesn't get into the, the crops or anything uh, there's my hydraulic plugs uh, quick quick connects and they, they work fine uh, like I said got an overrun clutch uh, the nice type and they're handy I actually highly recommend them if you're going to use something that runs off a of PTO get you an overrun clutch saves you a lot of wear and tear in your brake system uh, trying to keep, get this thing stopped as suddenly because uh, they won't stop on a dime if the PTO is turning now as far as the mower it is a seven foot it's made by Agmate it was just sold by Agri Supply and they're in Virginia and the Carolinas it's pretty popular down there up here we're rural king down near their Agri Supply very nice mower for something that's made in China I have to say it uh, about didn't think I'd ever say that about anything made in China but this is actually a, a very nice machine uh, debating on whether to get one because I, I just basically see, going from pictures and descriptions and I had no reviews on it but uh, the deck uh, thickness is like six millimeters which is pretty doggone thick and uh, I mean it is built tough it's built kind of like the tractor itself I've used this for over two years now and yeah it's dirty and it's a uh, little you know ding on the corners where I've gotten up against things there but there is no no dents no uh, barely scratch the paint on this thing I mean it is tough built uh, belts look like new and they've been used for two years uh, this actually comes with the chain on the back if you can see it that uh, others you pay extra for that that comes uh, with this 
and uh, the, the way that it flexes as it rolls across the ground is the top of the three point is connected to the back and the back has a, a slot that allows it to flex and move right now I have it set so when I pick it up it sits straight it's supposed to sit at an angle just a little bit to let it flow uh, flex as you go up and down over hills but uh, it has a thing on the front to prevent it from a, a bottom bottoming out or scarfing the gra grass it still does it just a bit if it's too much of a sl uh, contour but not that much not as much as you might think two very large belts as I said it's got nice uh, depth wheels as I call them you can adjust the height of your cut by the spacers on top and spacers on the bottom these do come with pins and clips and I did take those pins and clips out and put regular bolts with lock nuts on, on there just for the fact that about the second time I mowed I lost the pin on the front didn't lose the, uh, the clip on me I lost the pin I stayed in but rather than go through the hassle of losing all these and everything I just uh, took it off and uh, put bolts in there ne never had the problem again but you know if I wanted to change the adjustment on the height, just take the bolt out and do what I need to do and put the bolt back. Uh, as far as the front, I did replace all the uh, nuts on these bolts on the three point with um, most of them with lock nuts. Just for the fact that this thing does vibrate and it's just uh, less hassle. You know, I check these about every month and occasionally one would be loose and rather than deal with that I just put lock nuts on there and that took away the problem and uh, the blades uh, super tough blades they're about 50 bucks for the three buck or three blades to replace them and I do that about every year uh, sharpen them about every fourth or fifth time I cut I don't recommend cutting wet grass with this. You can. I have done it when I just don't have the time to. I've got to get the mowing done, and I don't have the time to to wait till it dries. But uh, it, it it'll cut wet. It'll leave a little bit of a more of a chunks and windrow, you know, behind you. But uh, when it's dry and uh, you know everything not too tall, you hardly see any trail behind you of grass. In fact, all this show you my yard here I mowed this yesterday and the grass was about I don't know two inches tall and you see a little spots of windrow here and there but overall you can see some more toward the field where it was a little bit taller overall it does a great job and I mean the tractor is about uh, 30 horsepower or so in the PTO and I run about 1800 rpm and then unless I'm going through a really really high spot barely bogs it down uh, goes along at a pretty good clip and I'm like I say it my tractor mows a little the speed just a little bit faster than I care for when I mow just because I have to get up around the trees and stuff but it doesn't really slow the tractor down too much and it weighs about 700 pounds and without the power steering you put a little weight on the on the back end keep it on the on the back end and you steer like you have power steering because it takes all some of the weight off the front but it's a nice setup it works well and I'm very pleased with it I would recommend this again uh, I'll get a I have about a uh, six inches I think my wheel uh, with my wheels uh, new wheels I'm 72 inches wide on my tractor and this is 84 inches so it puts me just a little bit Past. but it's 84 inches wide does a great job uh, the one thing I would just say if you're not going to use lock lock uh, nuts on it lock and uh, that type of deal like I did that you go by go around and check it periodically because they do vibrate loose the other thing I did put on there is uh, I believe they're from a company called